Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar at the forefront with constituents, political campaigning with programmatic. My name is Amanda Benavides, and I'm part of the marketing team here at Stack Adapt. Before we get started, we just have a few housekeeping items to cover, and then we can get the webinar underway. We're happy to field any questions you might have on any of the content. Please feel free to place them in the questions area of the GoToWebinar panel. We'll address all questions at the end of our session during the Q&A. If there are any questions we're not able to address in the allotted time, we'll follow up directly after the webinar is complete. Just a quick note, this webinar is being recorded and will be shared shortly after we end. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to our presenters today to introduce themselves. Thanks so much for the intro, Amanda, and thanks to all of you for joining us. I'm Nathan, an account executive with Stack Adapt based in Virginia. I've spent the bulk of my career working with campaigns and advocacy groups in the DC area. I can go next. My name is Katrina. I'm a senior account executive with uh, Stack Adapt. This is going to be my fourth election cycle, and most of my book focuses on political advocacy and nonprofit work. And uh, excited to delve into this with y'all. Hi everyone, my name is Emily Homan and I'm an account executive over here at Stack Adapt. I work with clients on political advocacy and government clients and very excited to host this webinar today. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, so I'm sure we, that we have a mix of political veterans and rising stars on today's call. So before we dive into the program, I just want to share an overview of Stack Adapt and what it means to be a fully featured demand side platform. So as a DSP, we provide the tools and technology that allows consultants, agencies, and campaigns to place advertising from standard display or native to connected TV and programmatic audio on the open web programmatically. This allows you to find your voters and activists wherever they are online and deliver your message while making the most efficient use of your campaign's media budget. For today, we're going to be covering a number of topics, including targeting, creative, and general best practices in programmatic advertising all through the lens of a political marketer gearing up for the 2022 midterms. But to set the stage, let's start with a look at some of the challenges that we found political orgs and campaigns encounter most frequently when planning their media buying. First up are the constraints imposed by walled gardens. These are the online ecosystems like Meta slash Facebook and Google that limit access to advertising inventory and require marketers to work directly with their platforms to reach their users and data. The siloed nature of these platforms and targeting tools require agencies and campaigns to be familiar with a variety of different user interfaces and capabilities, which means more time spent training staff and less time spent executing those campaigns. And once you're on a platform, restrictions or bans on political advertising imposed are moving targets, unpredictable, and they make it hard to plan. Most of us will remember the abrupt bans on new political advertising before the 2020 election, and it's really still unclear how Facebook and Google are going to be handling this year. Now, even without content restrictions, the limits on available audience data, such as the removal of political affiliation targeting, force campaigns to scale back their investment and list growth, or risk spreading their media budget too thin. In general, this uncertainty is really making it worthwhile to consider alternative ways to reach your voters online. Now, meanwhile, offline, campaigns are facing a second bucket of challenges. Traditional media like linear TV and radio make finding the specific voters you need difficult, expensive, and rely on a spray and pray approach. This means that on their own, these channels are an inefficient use of a limited set of media dollars and gross rating points don't reliably translate into new or persuaded voters. Not to mention that these channels are already saturated with persuasion and turnout messaging, driving costs higher to reach a smaller and smaller portion of the voter universe. Of course, using these channels is how political media buyers have operated for decades, and these challenges are nothing new. So what has really changed? That brings us to our last bucket, the choice paralysis that's caused by a, a growth of new channels like connected TV, programmatic video, and audio. The programmatic space is moving quickly, so it's understandably risky to take a chance skilling up with a new platform only to learn it doesn't do what you thought it would. But these channels are growing fast as cord, coming, cord cutting becomes more common. Voters scale back their consumption of traditional media and new generations of tech savvy voters come of age. More voters are available to you by these channels in 2022 than ever before. And the same will be the case next year with nearly $75 billion expected to be spent on programmatic video in the US alone. 
programmatic audio is on a similar growth trajectory. You can see spend projections here, but in terms of usage, 71% of the US population was listening to digital audio in 2021, and they did so for over 16 hours a week on average. And for political campaigns specifically, the growth is clear. Nearly two and a half billion is expected in digital media spend this year. And the adoption of new online channels is happening fast, particularly for down ballot races, where the efficient use of a small media budget is all the more important. Voters that are changing their media diets in general make a multi-channel multi -channel strategy of connected TV, audio, and video alongside your traditional channels really the only way to reach your entire voter universe and hit your win number. Finding a way to plan a multi-channel approach while minimizing the onboarding risk with a platform is crucial for modern campaigns. So with the scene set, the question remains, what are we supposed to do? So let's start with how to find your voters. So as consultants and campaign operatives, we know that you know best how to win your specific candidates races. We also know that the composition of your voter universe is going to vary based on the district and state. And that's why it's super important to have a variety of different ways for you to identify your voters and serve ads to them across the open web. Now, let's say that you simply wanna target voters you've already, already identified for persuasion or turnout. In that case, you'd wanna take advantage of first party targeting by uploading your file of names, addresses, phone numbers, and email addresses for targeting with your DSP. This is something that's made possible with an onboarding process facilitated by a partner like Stack Adapt and our live ramp integration. Well, maybe you don't actually have access to an existing voter list and you still wanna find new supporters and donors. That's when you're going to be tapping into other targeting methods like access to third-party audiences. Uh, this is something that at Stack Adapt we facilitate with a wide variety of partners uh, and a wide variety of different scoring mechanisms and, and subdivisions of those audiences. We can also leverage more custom segments, things like browsing audiences, which are grouping uh, individuals you can reach on the open web based on their online viewing behavior, what kind of content they're reading online, and things like capitalizing on the news that your campaign might wanna do, that's perfect for that. Let's put together a set of keywords that you can use to find an audience on the web. Now let's say that you're on the advocacy side and you're looking to influence policy. That's also a place where our custom segments can be, can be leveraged. Uh, DSPs have access to things like ABM targeting that we can leverage to find influencers in certain areas of policy. And, and you can target specifically, maybe even geotargeting audiences uh, that are at the Capitol building or in certain, certain, uh, certain district offices. So another area that's super important when it comes to your targeting is making sure that you're able to lock in your inventory before your campaigns. Obviously with increased political spending comes greater competition, higher CPMs, and especially as we get closer and closer to the election months. This is why planning ahead is super important, particularly for political campaigns. A programmatic guaranteed is a feature offered by DSPs that facilitates one-to-one -one deals between publishers and advertisers. This allows you to pay a flat negotiated CPM for inventory and in, in return for purchasing all of the impressions, fulfilling, facil, uh, fulfilling your criteria, the publisher sets aside that inventory for your campaign. PG locks in rates against an audience that's either hard to find or can help ensure delivery on your campaigns, particularly during periods when there's high competition, such as the days leading up to an election. For example, you can use programmatic guarantee to reserve specific connected TV placements on particular dates. Some questions that you might consider uh, before you, you move forward with a plan uh, with a programmatic guaranteed buy are one, you know, what publishers do you really want to tap into and why? Two, how specific do you feel your geo will be and do you plan on layering on top of that first party data? And three, what are some of the PG rates that you've been quoted and are they specific to political? All right, and with that, I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Emily. Thanks, Nathan. So I wanna shift gears a bit here and talk about creative tactics. In the digital world, we're constantly competing for users' attention. And when it comes to political, that's no different. During an election year, this space is even more competitive. So in this next section, I'll cover some creative tactics and strategies that should be considered. 
it's important not to underestimate the impact of the ad's user interface and experience when it comes to your ads. Since you only have a couple of seconds to grab intention, it's important that your ad's colors, copy, and imagery is effective. We recommend, again, planning early when you can and getting your team involved in understanding the environment that your ads will appear on. So getting more specific, we put together two ideas for creative messaging. On the left is a carousel. On the left is an animated unit. This would circle through three different frames and highlight three key issues that are important to the candidate. In this example, climate change, healthcare, and the economy are featured. On the right-hand side, we have a countdown unit. This is especially effective when it comes to campaigns that are working towards a specific date. For example, this could count down to a debate or a day that the polls open. Beyond just display creatives, we also recommend leveraging video and native units with the same branding to ensure that all channels are cohesive and telling a consistent story about the client or issue that you're promoting. At Stack It Up, we have an in-house creative studio that we see as an extension of your creative team. Our experts are happy to help build out these units for you and brainstorm what ad formats make the most sense for your campaign. Another example we've included here is a sample CTV ad. When it comes to connecting messaging and branding across channels, it's important to stay consistent. Oftentimes when working with a campaign directly, you'll get sent a ton of video. Some of this video may not be in 15 or 30 second clips, and our team is able to help you trim down that video to ensure that we can run it in our CTV or video placements. Building off of that, if you are using a video for CTV, we recommend using that video asset that you already have and embedding that video into an animated HTML5 unit. We have an example here. The advantage to this is that we're able to capture people who have watched your CTV ad to 100% completion and then retarget them on their desktop, tablet, and mobile devices to keep that message momentum going. This quick example shows how we are able to embed these units, uh, and our in-house creative team is more than happy to provide this, sort, this service to you. The last creative example that we'd like to share is our discovery unit. These are especially powerful and useful when it comes to political advertising. First, the great thing about these units is that they are fully customizable. And by that, I mean that we're able to change the colors, logos, branding, and question to align with your advertiser. Beyond that, we're able to collect users' responses. For example, if you ask the question, which candidate do you support, um, as we're featuring here, we can then pull those audiences and retarget those users who have said uh, candidate A, candidate B, and so on, um, with specific messaging or suppress them if they're interested in the candidate um, that you wouldn't like to be associated with. And this creative unit is actually a great segue for what I'd like to talk about next, which is measuring political lift. So with an expected record-breaking amount that is to be spent on political ads this year, we know that ads work and that they're extremely influential. When it comes to political advertising, one of the most important questions to be answered are, are my ads working? And what is the impact of running my paid media? Stack Adapt has a great in-house solution for answering these questions. We're able to measure candidate favorability, persuasion regarding specific topics or messages, as well as voter intent. So how exactly are we able to go about measurement? When running a campaign through Stack Adapt, you can measure persuasion against any of the channels that we offer. So display, video, CTV, OTT, audio, and native. For the sake of this example, I'll use CTV. We'll run your CTV ad to an exposed group, so an audience that will see your ad, and then a control group, an audience that will not be served your ad. We'll then retarget those audiences who have seen and who have not seen your ad with your desired question. In this example, it's who are you planning on voting for in the upcoming elections? From there, we're able to gather responses on who the control, on who the control group is more likely to vote for versus the exposed group. What's great is that the question that we ask can be, again, fully customizable to whatever the advertiser would like to measure. While some other persuasion list studies limit what you ask, we give you full control to ensure that you're measuring what you want. These surveys are not incentivized and run in standard banner placements across the web. To contextualize this a bit more, we also have a white labeled candidate lift survey we did for a political campaign. On the left here, you can see that the question that was asked to audiences was, how would you describe your opinion of, insert the candidate's name, 
For audiences who were exposed to the ads that were run, we saw a 4.23% lift in the exposed group. This data is extremely valuable because it provides uh, validation that the strategies, tactics, and creative that we're leveraging are effective in providing lift for your candidate. This is one sample piece of data we have, but we're able to further break this out by geo, creative type, channel, and more. Overall, this is one of the strongest tools that political advertisers can take advantage of and a great way to validate your media strategy and provide definitive data to show that your paid advertisements are effective and are persuading your target audience. So now I'm going to switch gears one more time and jump into some of the best practices we've put together when it comes to political advertising. This is a quick checklist uh, of things that we put together that you should consider when you're planning your campaign. First, you should consider your goals and channels. Are you looking to fundraise or are you looking to get awareness out there for your candidate? Second, it's also crucial to find the ideal partner. You want to partner with vendors and companies that understand the unique nuances of political advertising and will be able to provide the support that you need as we get into election season. Third, Ensure that you're measuring res your results, whether that's through real-time recording or setting up a persuasion lift survey. Ensure that you have tools in place that will give you feedback on how your campaign is working. Fourth, craft engaging messaging. In an already crowded space, you only have a few seconds to capture your audience's attention and persuade them with your message. Consider the copy and messaging that your advertiser needs to cut through the noise. And finally, define your audience and leverage the right targeting options. Some of these may be major political data partners, first party data, pixel data, contextual data, and more. And with all of that in mind, I'm now going to pass the presentation over to Katrina, who will dive into how StackDap can specifically help with some of these best practices that I've outlined. Thank you so much, Emily. Yeah, so moving on to the next slide, uh, you know, why should you work with us over another DSP? We can handle you know, your, any demands that you have, any sort of formats. Um, a a cross-channel strategy is what we usually see to be the most effective. So uh, you know, if you wanna do sequential messaging, and what I mean by that is you run a CTV ad to start, and then maybe you wanna target people who saw 100% of that ad, they fully watched the ad, maybe target them with a, a get out the vote ad, and it's gonna be a display or native ad with a countdown to when the election is. Or maybe you wanna you know, target them with audio, something like that. We can help you with sequential messaging. We can help you with your data needs. We can help you with your creative. Um, and, and as Nathan and Emily have been reviewing, we have, you know, you should test our AI. Our um, platform has a different AI compared to different DSPs. We are able to help you with most of your robust political needs. We're an experienced team, uh, particularly in political, whether you need to do contextual solutions, whether you just want to run specifically on CTV, if you want to run a brand lift or candidate lift test, we can help you with that. So um, the next few slides, I'm going to jump into what I've been seeing trending in the political space on digital. So the first one, CTV, that is the king, um, right next to linear TV, which we don't do, uh, you, right next to when you're running your TV ads, the next best thing to run is connected TV. And when you see all these um, voters cutting the cord, they're no longer reachable on linear TV. The best place to reach them is on CTV. And uh, if you're not familiar with what CTV is, that's, you know, think of Hulu or Sling or Fubo, uh, ad-supported streaming services. That's usually where my clients want to max out their budget first. So 100% viewable. We usually see completion rates, you know, 99% plus. It's premium inventory. And, you know, if you ever need an inventory list of where we target on CTV, we're happy to provide one for you. Uh, and, the, and the ads are memorable. People aren't, you can't close the CTV ad. You can turn the TV off, but other than that, you can't navigate away or anything like that. So that's the first format that we've been seeing be pretty engaging. Um, the next one would be audio. So if you're familiar with the rules of political advertising, you'll know that Spotify, uh, although we do partner with them, isn't accepting political advertising, but that doesn't mean other vendors aren't. So uh, Pandora, iHeartMedia, they are accepting political, other audio vendors are accepting it. We see very strong um, audio completion rates, which is what you see at the bottom, ACR. We usually see very similar to CTV, like 95% plus completion rates in audio. So that's something, again, if you're running a radio strategy and you want to just send us your MP3s, that's that's another tactic that you consider can consider, and um, we can help run that for you. So. 
the things that I like to touch on with clients are you know, three things. So we're more than just writing your media for you. We can help you in other ways. So the three main ways are creative solutions and analytics. So creative, Emily already touched on. Oftentimes we can help you as added value with your creatives making countdown units, in banner video units, et cetera, help you with your native ads. So that's one huge, huge way that we can help. The second is solutions. And this is one we, we use a lot with uh, different teams. So whether you need um, your first party voter lists or CRM data uploaded, we have a, a near real time integration. So what that means is instead of waiting, you know, usually three to five days for your voter list to match and be ready to be targeted, you really only have to wait a few hours, uh, if that. We also have congressional district targeting in our platform, which is convenient for anyone running congressional races, along with third party audiences. But even then, we also have things like influencer targeting. So if you're trying to reach um, congressional or policy influencers in DC or other major DMAs, we're able to help build out more custom targeting for you, which is really important. Wow. And then finally, analytics. So if you're doing any sort of candidate lift, we have a full analytics team. If you need insight reports after your campaign runs, that's something we can help you pull. We can also help you analyze your brand lift or candidate lift, uh, similar to what Emily was talking about earlier. So just to wrap up, uh, we would love to partner with you on any sort of political campaigns you have or consult and advise on um, if you're thinking of launching any sort of political pack uh, voter registration, fundraising, et cetera. Uh, we can help you with that. We can help you advertise across multiple channels. So we're not just, you know, we don't just sit on CTV, we sit on native display, audio, et cetera. And we can help you plan a more sequential messaging strategy. If that's something that's of interest and you have the creative bandwidth for. We can also help leverage advanced targeting and creative tactics. So let's say you have certain creative that needs to serve in a certain geo or a certain time. Um, if you have polling date, like if your polls close at a certain time, we can set all those rules in the platform and have the creative rotate based on performance or evenly, uh, you know, we can get as advanced as you want to get on a political campaign or we can keep it as simple as you want. It really, it really depends on how granular you want to get with the targeting. But, you know, finally, we want, we want to encourage you to find the, the right person when you're starting your political campaigns. You want to make sure you're working with someone who understands the political rules, like your creatives have to have a disclaimer, for example, or um, you can't work hard side and soft side at the same time. Things like that our team is experienced with. Uh, you know, we're used to handling this and we're excited to work with you. And hopefully, uh, the, you know, this presentation has been helpful for you all. And I think at this point, we are opening it up for Q&A. Yeah, thank you so much, Nathan, Emily, and Katrina for your fantastic presentation. So we'd now like to jump into the Q&A portion of the webinar. As a quick reminder, if you have any questions, please place them in the questions box. So it does look like we're getting some questions in here now. And okay, let's tackle this first one. Um, is it possible to run donation campaigns with StackAdapt? Are there any restrictions to know about? I'm happy to take this one uh, because we do sometimes run fundraising campaigns. So yes, uh, we are able to run donation or fundraising based campaigns. Uh, in terms of restrictions, uh, if you've ever run fundraising campaigns before, you know, like I said earlier, you do need disclaimers on the creative. Um, and then beyond that, uh, usually we need to place a pixel on the site so you, there is flexibility needed from the client in terms of placing the pixel so that we can track exactly how much donation revenue has been coming through from the client perfect uh next question here is retargeting based off of linear tv campaigns possible Yes, so we do have the ability to do that. Uh, we have a partnership with Comscore that allows us to uh, specify what exactly on linear TV that we would like to retarget off of digitally. Next question, uh, how granular can you get with targeting? Uh, for example, more local campaigns with tight district mapping? So um, we can, uh, we can, we, we mentioned before that we have congressional targeting built right into the platform. Um, that said, we work with a variety of third-party data partners that can uh, provide a granular district mapping for uh, you know, newly minted uh, state house and senate districts across the country. So uh, really, it's it's kind of up to whatever your needs are. We can work with our data partners to make sure you have an audience that 
that meets your district map needs. Um, and outside of that, we also have built into our platform uh, additional geo radius targeting. So if you wanted to get granular down to uh, you know, a certain lat long and, and have a, a specified radius, we can collect uh, individuals in that in that radius to serve ads to. Uh, we can also layer on uh, zip code targeting as well. So really, it's it's a question of of reaching out to your your Stagit app rep and uh, and you know kind of describing your needs and and we can put together a, a geo solution for you. Perfect. Hey, next question. Um, do you have API reporting capabilities where we can provide branded reports to our clients via our web portal? Yes, we can definitely do that. We do have API integrations. Um, the main ones that we typically see are Google Data Studio, Funnel.io, Supermetrics, Tapflix. However, if you use a different portal, we can definitely still connect to your API. Happy to chat further about that. Great. Okay, next question. Uh, can we upload hashed voter files and use it for targeting? I can take this one. Yep. So uh, I know we talked about this earlier, but it was a, a quick presentation. We do have a real-time integration with a company called LiveRamp, which if you've done any political CRM data, they're pretty much, they have a monopoly over the market for CRM file matching. So uh, we are not allowed to touch the file or the data, so please don't send us that, but we can tell you how to upload. It's very easy. You go into the platform, you upload it, um, you upload your file with the voter data name, uh, name, email, phone number, address, et cetera. We match it, and uh, we never see any of it. So it's encrypted, it's matched. We don't we don't touch it at all. It lives on LiveRamp, but it's in our platform. You'll be able to go in, see the match rate, um, and then target very quickly. Perfect. All right. So last question here: Is this solely a political advertising platform, or does this service also include other ad advertising opportunities? So no, it's not just a political advertising platform. Um, thanks for the question. We handle any sort of vertical. So if you've got retail, if you've got finance, B2B, um, tourism, I'm trying to healthcare, et cetera, um, we, can, we can take any of those clients on. It basically, if you want to run digital ads, you can come to us and ask. There, there are very few exceptions to that rule of what we will accept, basically. So long as our supply partners will accept it as a brand safe ad to run, we can, we can all absolutely do that. This, this webinar is just focused on political. Fantastic. All right, and I think that's all the questions we have for today. So I wanted to give thanks to everyone again for attending our webinar and wanted to thank our presenters. So that concludes today's webinar. And we hope you found it both informative and insightful. We'll be sending out a follow-up email with a recording to all registrants. Please don't hesitate to reach out with any other questions you might have. Thanks again for joining us, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day.